Good afternoon, everyone. Habari. Uh, no introduction. So the title of my talk is From Generation to Use of Climate Information in African Agriculture. And my goal in the next six minutes, if Peter will let me, <laughs> is simply to share some actionable guidance based on practical, practical experiences of work that has gone on through the World Bank ACRA project and a wider initiative um, called ENACTS on how to move from the generation of climate information, uh, which forms the backbone of anticipatory action and climate smart agriculture, to actually enabling its use um, and decision making at all levels. Hmm. Do I need to click? Yes, okay. Uh, motivating questions, yeah, uh, which we'll be discussing more in the breakout groups after this, which like we just did, uh, are how can we produce climate information that is actionable and relevant at local scales? And then how can we move beyond access of climate information uh, to promoting its use in anticipatory action and also broader um, resilience building? Yeah. So to help answer these questions or at least provide some insights, I'm going to follow this roadmap, right? So first, I'm just gonna give you a little overview of this ACRE project, which is the context in which the learnings took place. Uh, then I'm gonna briefly outline why moving from availability of climate information to ensuring access and use is actually very important for anticipatory action. And uh, to make the case, given the limited time, I'm just going to share about one innovation that uh, has been advanced for the ACRE project. And it is a forecasting approach known as the next gen forecasting approach, which is enabling meteorological services across Africa to produce objective, timely, and tailored forecasts at multiple timescales in a way that in turn then enables timely and appropriate planning, um, especially in the face of climate extremes. But first things first, um, what is the ACRE project? So the $60 million ACRE project is accelerating the impacts of CGIAR research uh, for Africa is a project that aims to enhance access to climate information services and validated climate smart agriculture technologies in Africa basically to help countries strengthen the resilience, um, the re resilience of their agricultural sectors to the climate challenge. So it just completed its first phase, and now there is a new $100 million five-year second phase of this project that focuses predominantly on moving from access to use, so really like that last step, right? Uh, use of climate information and climate smart agriculture practices. Um, all of the activities are led by CGIR centers, and they're focused in these six core countries you see. So there's three in East and Southern Africa and three in West Africa, but there's also regional programs um, where we're trying to promote what we call spillover effects with countries facing uh, similar challenges. So what I mean by that is the, the project's targeting six, targeting six countries, but um, basically can go beyond, beyond those. Um, why is the World Bank investing $100 million in this endeavor? Because moving from access to use of climate information is actually really, really important. So we're talking about achieving actual impact. And the point I'd like to underscore here is that even when climate information is freely available and even freely accessible, even when we have information and products that are theoretically useful and usable, they're often not used, they're sometimes not actionably used in climate sensitive decision making, I think we all know this. Why? There are so many reasons why and I definitely can't go over all of them, but sometimes the data information is available but not delivered in a timely way, tailored for a certain sector or in a decision relevant format for non-experts or even experts. Uh, sometimes the information's out there, people are not, but people are not aware of it. Um, or don't have the capacities to use it. So this Enhancing National Climate Services Initiative that's on the screen right now is just simply an approach that's been initiated by the IRI but embedded within the ACRE project to enhance availability, access, and use, all three of those things being very important of climate information. And it encompasses so, so, so many different tools towards doing that, so many different approaches. Um, but one of these is the next-gen forecasting approach. So um, on availability of climate information, so I just said availability, access, use. So on availability of climate information, the next-gen forecasting approach helps forecasters to quickly select the best climate models for any region of interest through a process-based evaluation, and then it automates the generation and verification of tailored predictions at multiple timescales at regional, national, and subnational level. Maybe that sounded like Chinese to some people, <laughs> but um, yeah. I don't wanna go into the technicalities of the forecasting approach, it's a bit complicated, but what I do wanna to emphasize to you all is that it's based on 25 years of research at IRI, and it's significant in that it helps meteorological agencies to quickly produce high resolution, objective, location specific forecasts, seasonally and subseasonally, right? So why does it matter that forecasts are able to be produced quickly? Why does it matter that forecasts are objective? And then why does it matter that forecasts are high resolution and location specific? Um, on quickness when it comes to climate extremes, um, of course time is often of the essence. It's really important to have good information and forecasts as soon as possible so that action can occur before 
things like flooding or drought um, occur. And on objectiveness and location specificity, these things are really mission critical for giving you know, contextualized and tailored advisories and advice, whether it's a farmer or even a pastoralist, on what conditions they might expect and how this translates to impact. So on the access and use side, I really want to highlight that the forecasting approach is innovative, not just in the way that the forecasts are able to be generated for any location, really downscaled, but also in the way that they're communicated. So historically, seasonal forecasts show the likelihood of a location receiving this normal, above normal, below normal rainfall amount. So this is the image you see um, up top with Ethiopia. But these categories are really generally too broad and too vague to inform meaningful agricultural planning. You can even see it on that map there. So next-gen forecasts have the option of showing the specific probability of, of exceeding or not exceeding a certain amount of rainfall at a specific, specific location. Okay, so if your specific interest is whether a place will receive at least 800 millimeters of rainfall for maize, for example, you can look at that on a graph. That's the graph you see with the red and blue um, lines. Or you can even look at it on a map. That's what you see on the way right with the color bars um, indicating the gradients of probabilities for any location. And these are freely available and downloadable maps available publicly through interfaces called map rooms um, at the meteorological agencies. And you know this may seem like, oh, semantics. You have a probability graph. Cool, it's changed a little bit. But this format is actually a game changer um, for those working in the agricultural space because by communicating the forecast in this way, people can actually make decisions about what crop varieties to use for the coming season um, based on their water requirements, for example. Um, and on the subseasonal level, these subseasonal forecasts are used to monitor the evolution of, of droughts um, and even possibly flooding. So, like decisions like this make the difference between um, food security and insecurity, and they're used by obviously individuals, municipalities, humanitarian development workers, the government as a whole, especially for managing risks. So, really. Being able to have access to reliable location-specific forecasts, I, I really can't emphasize enough, enables the kinds of tailored advisors that farmers or even pastoralists or even staff from humanitarian development agencies working with those people really need um, for planning. Um, beyond the forecast itself and the way it's communicated, a big part of helping to promote its uptake and use has been capacity development. And by partnering with these key regional climate centers like ICPAC um, over in East Africa and Agrimet over in West Africa, uh, and with big thanks to Acre Project and obviously huge, huge support to Ilri and Teferi who's sitting over there, um, we've been able to extend capacity building on this really high need uh, approach to more than 30 African countries. Obviously still seeing some gaps there and uh, other regional centers will be key for that. And I will wrap up, I know time is going, but um, just wanted to share in their own words from partners, um, this has been really well received and well appreciated as a transformative approach by our colleagues across Africa and especially East Africa to the point where you can see our colleague from Kenya the Kenya Met Department says users of the forecast notice the difference and ask if they're using new machines to produce the forecast, not new machines, a new approach. And then our colleague from ICPAC, the Regional Climate Center, uh, said that the approach allows her to quickly produce the forecast. Um, and that's really helped her to issue the forecast on time. So that's really important. And then uh, allowed her to focus on other tasks. So that's all I have for now. Hopefully some good food for thought on how to achieve yeah, locally relevant climate information. That's it. Thank you.